Hello. Hello. So, okay, Brian's here as well. Yes, yes, I am. Uh, by the way, Amy, as we have you here, we discussed the topic about the um, um, about the GitHub repo before we can st still cannot assign any labels. So, so I think you made it that name, right? Go ahead and check for um, the invitations for to become admin. That is, I believe, where the uh, the hangup is. I am, however. Ah, uh, okay. Yep, that's what's going on. You gotta accept the invite. Sorry. Oh, okay. It's not that we're all not getting GitHub invites, so. Yep, that explains that. <laughs> I am actually uh, editing things to be able to add you all as chairs um, because it's come to my attention that we've not actually done that. So I'm actually submitting a PR at the moment. OK, great, thanks. So we have not a fixed set of agenda for today. Is the high amount of people from Microsoft joining today an indicator that you want to present on Brigade? I don't think we had any plans to present anything today. Yeah. All right, here, let's see. Okay, well, we're a few minutes after the hour now, so let's go ahead and get started. And like Alice said that uh, we didn't get any demos on the agenda this week, but um, we still have some open items. And let me actually go find the, um, let me go find our, our running document one second. because there are definitely some new things that we need to bring up right now. Uh, I can post it in the, in the chat here. Oh, there it is. The heading might be all the way down, but uh, there you are, you know, have fun. Yeah, it's all good. All right, so what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and share this bad boy. see if I can find this window. All right. All right, so there are some items that didn't uh, hit the agenda. And um, so I'm just going to rattle them off and then we'll tackle them from top to bottom and get them in the document. So 
the first item is um, around the definition of operator. Uh, I think the history here is um, we know, um, depending on who you talk to, an operator is different. Um, and we want to make sure that there's a canonical, go ahead. That there is a canonical definition of what an operator is and have it written down. Um, and the next item that um, Al was proposed is, is um, the operator framework versus the hub. Um, there, I believe they've been submitted and um, we need to figure out if they should be um, the same submission or separate submissions. Yeah, this was maybe to, to quickly jump in. This was a discussion yesterday in the TUC meeting. So for those of you who haven't heard, it was like a special discussion about the operator hub. Number one was a clear definition uh, pointing out like Oh, did Alice go somewhere? Did I go somewhere? I should be back now, hopefully. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, my, my, my Mac just decided to switch to um, microphone null, which obviously did not work that great, sorry. Um, so yeah. Am I back? Yes. Ah, great. I don't know what's going on with Zoom. Um, so yeah, the, the discussion yesterday was to really have the definition of an operator first uh, before we um, can really validate um, further the operator project and whether there's something missing in the project that we want to see and how we want an operator to be structured. And the second, like, like there was a discussion about service manager, uh, for example, and should something like metering be part of an operator or should it not be part of the um, a core operator capability? And an operator framework versus operator hub is, I think, still an important discussion because the operator framework per se allows to build the operator, but it's a whole different story if the operator hub should be managed by CNCF as well. So this is really a question to, to Red Hat uh, on whether we want to separate the two. I'm not sure we have anybody in the call from Reddit today, though. No, we don't. I don't think we do. No. We do, but I, this is Noel from Red Hat. We do, right. but I need to check it out internally. So I get, I get the right people on the call for you. Yeah. Yeah, I think these are the, these are two, the main, two main items that, that we need to discuss because it always has different implications. Uh, Right. It has been done before, obviously with Helm and uh, the, the, the Chart Museum, but I think it's better to understand what the future structure and the management of the project should be, and believe whether it should be two separate submissions um, conceptually. So uh, if I understand it right, the operator framework includes in, in their submission the operator lifecycle manager and yeah. the operator hub. All three of those, and maybe more, are bundled in the current submission. It is not just the framework, it's a collection of things that surround it. Yeah, I think that's correct. And also, um, one thing that we, I think we, there are some discussion around it already. Actually, people are using operator framework mostly for developing operators. So the position of operator hub and operator lifecycle management or things like that are not quite in the scope of many people are using operators. So I think that is the discussions we're really mostly about. Well, uh, some of this, if I understand it right, is there's another submission for KUDO, which is another operator-based project, and it takes a different route than the operator hub. It is also, I, I don't know the ins and outs of it. I know there are other operators out there, um, such as uh, the one that the Microsoft folks wrote, um, for, it's called Rudder, and that's another example of an operator. It's not even written in Go, and it doesn't use things like chargeback and other things like that that are included in the operator lifecycle manager, right? And operator lifecycle manager, operator hub, and operator framework are all bundled together. So what does all of this mean when there's these other things outside of the one submission? Like, how does it all play together, and what does that mean? 
Yeah, and I think that's what uh, everybody's a bit unclear about right now because it's like not just the project, it's a couple of bits and pieces. And the question should really go back to Red Hat, whether they want to potentially separate the three because it's the three different discussions, kind of. Hi, hi guys, this is Diane Mueller. Hi, Diane, perfect. Sorry, I, I, someone just pinged me while I was in another CNCF Zoom room, so I apologize. I couldn't clone myself earlier. Um, so uh, I, can you ask the question again about um, operator framework versus operator hub? Uh, yeah, let's quickly repeat. We had yesterday uh, a presentation also to the TOC and a couple of questions came up regarding the um, operator's framework submission. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, operator and operator lifecycle manager, that they're bundled together um, and obviously serving two different purposes, plus also operator hub and how this should like all fit together because it's different to have the project, the operator framework project inside CNCF versus to more or less them discuss how we can manage and run uh, the entire uh, operator hub. And plus we have the charging and metering obviously from operator lifecycle manager and whether this should be like a core component of for of the operator as well. So um, I think the game plan, um, and I think Aaron Boyd probably could answer this better than I, than I, um, though I am the person behind the curtain at operatorhub.io. Um, but most of the operatorhub.io um, efforts are, are getting to be pretty automated. Um, and what we're looking for in donating that piece, and this is Diane's point of view, um, is to, um, in the review process, get more people involved in, um, in that. So by donating it, um, it becomes not such a, a Red Hat centric um, process or resource process, but we would still put resources on it to um, obviously to, to help with the CI CD process of getting things into operator IO. Um, and it would be nice, in my opinion, um, to have a non vendor space um, or non branded a CNCF branded space for all of these operators and services that had um, players. Um, we um, have had in interest from um, AWS and Google in resourcing some of the, um, the review and, and upload process, but it's, it's pretty highly automated at this point. So operator hub itself um, is, is almost self sustaining, but you can never say that 100%. And the other projects, um, it, it's it's kind of it's being presented, I think, as a bundle because they all sort of feed each other and the feedback loop. So, um, is it a resourcing question of so, like so, Diane? I, I might be able to. This is Matt Farina. I might be able to fill it in. This started in the TOC meeting, okay. and the context is there are operators that do things very differently than the operator framework. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the other ones that's been submitted to the CNCF is Kudo. Uh, there's also other ones that have been written and so how do they play out because the operator hub plays very much into the way operator lifecycle uh, manager works and the operator framework and these other operators um, they do things very differently from that so what does it mean for them um, and some of these are written in like kudo some are written in entirely other languages they're not even go based um, and, and they're just different and so what does that mean? Because they don't fit the current operator hub model. And so do they, should they fit into that flow? You know, a lot of uh, operator lifecycle managers, very service catalog like, and there's a lot of operators out there that don't fit that mold. So how does all of this work together? And what does it mean? Should operator hub be something separate? So that way it's not coupled to operator lifecycle manager. It can be coupled to multiple operator projects, like say both Kudo and uh, the operator framework planned in the CNCF, it's, it's coupled to both. Like how does all of this work and what does it mean? So I actually think those are awesome questions because we've, I mean, I've thought about them as sort of the community person behind it. Um, and we've done some outreach with the Helm folks and with Kube Builder and um, had conversations about that. The goal of, op of the, the lifecycle management is really to get more mature operators um, out there in the wild and so we can support day two ops kind of things. Um, but 
by moving it into the CNCF, the governance of what goes into operatorhub.io becomes an open and transparent thing. So that would be then, I think, by adopting it into operatorhub.io, that conversation becomes something that um, people will have more influence over and be able to maybe extend operatorhub.io to do all the other types as well. So I don't think um, the donation of operatorhub.io as is um, precludes it from extending to adopt other um, forms of operators. But I think in my humble opinion, again, those ones that don't, there would have to be some metadata tagging thing show, showcasing you know, maybe what level of maturity because that's really been with Operator Hub one of the most significant things um, is being able to show the, the level of um, automation and uh, in place. Uh, so I think that that is where some of the disparity comes in. But um, I don't think anything, once it's in CNCF, I don't think anything precludes, um, no, nothing precludes it from being extended to adopt the other ones. So uh, let me ask this though. Uh, should it be a separate project from the operator framework? So that way, l let's just imagine a world where both KUDO and the operator framework have both been submitted and become successfully part of the CNCF. They're both going through that process now, uh, if I understand the backlog of issues, right? And they're both operator-based. Uh, because there's two projects, should the operator hub not be coupled to any of those projects so that way multiple projects can feed into it? Again, I... I think that once the donation and the adoption of it is done, it is up to the CNCF how, ah, how they okay. use it. Yeah, so I think we're just trying to get it out there into an openly governed fashion um, and, okay. and ha make sure, I know from my perspective, um, I would like to continue to have it support the operator lifecycle management and the, and the mm -hmm. level, up to level so five. Yeah, the, the reason, I, I, I'm sorry, the reason that I, I bring this up is when you submit it, it's not that the CNCF controls it. The CNCF lets each individual project have their own governance and they are seen as each individual projects, okay? And so it isn't donated to the CNCF as in it's the CNCF will go control it. The CNCF lets the project has its governance. So if it's part of operator um, framework, then that operator framework and that whole thing will have one set of governance and that would fall under that. And it would be separate from the governance of Prometheus or Envoy or any of the other CNCF projects. And if CUDA landed, it would have its own governance structure that is separate. In fact, if you look at the CNCF projects, each one of them has slightly different governance that works for them. It's different from something like the Apache model. And, and so where the operator hub lands when it is submitted will dictate how the governance is set up for that and what part of the project it is in relation to the other projects. Uh, I, I absolutely understand that. Um, and part of the outreach that we've been doing, and we obviously haven't done it to the KUDO group enough, is to try and work and collaborate with them um, to, their, to, to make sure that it ex we can extend it to other forms of operators. Um, and, you know, I totally understand that it's still going to be under the operator um, governance of, of whatever that group becomes and whatever its name. But I, um, the opportunity here is to collaborate openly and to get more and, and the, the possibility of it being adopted um, as an incubated project allows it to, you know, move forward and have more people under the umbrella of the operator framework reach, doing that collaboration with other projects. So, you know, it's, it's a semantic thing, I get it. Um, if you need to separate it out and in order to get operator framework um, done, then that's, that's the TOC's call. Um, but I, I, you know, I personally think that the thing that we need for operator framework and for the operator hub IO together is for them to grow underneath um, one project um, and collaborate with all the other ones. So, um, that's just, you know, the, the way that I would like to see this move forward. But um, yeah, it's really the TOC's call, um, whether they want all the pieces or um, they separate it out. Um, so real quick here um, about um, KUDO, uh, 
What What's the status of CUDA? Was that? Um, I not... haven't done much research on it yet, so I apologize. All right, um, because I'm not even sure if this conversation, if we even need to go that direction. This might be like a like a, a moot point with with CUDA. Just just to put to yeah. put it out there. Yeah. I think the, the the real question is here: if I wipe any type of operator. And I want to put it on operator hub. What is my minimum requirement to do so? So there's a there's there's scaffolding for Ansible and Helm um, and Python and and other languages already in place to to turn pretty much any of those into um, operator hub um, uh, service offering or offerings. So it, you know it just depends on how we extend. Yeah, thanks for putting my name. You can add my name in there too. Um, so it's it's pretty. Um, if you go to operatorhub.io, you can find the the way to to add anything in that's you know either Helm or um, Ansible operators and others. And so we just keep extending the SDK and the scaffolding to um, automate the building of pretty much anything and to make them operator hub ready. Yeah, I mean, the, I think the, the, the thing that um, maybe that you see it also, but we, at least I'm a bit well worried might be the wrong word. Uh, I think what needs further discussion is do we create like a gold standard what an operator looks like right now without involving other people who have operator frameworks like the two of other were mentioned for the requirements and because as soon as we as uh, appointed as a CNCF project, that's pretty much what we do. So this is what an operator has to look like. And I, I would like to have this discussion with uh, the the other folks as well. Yeah. Yes and no. I mean, I I, I think there's one of the things that that the CNCF has I think been clear about is that the, I mean, it, optics might be in mark how people market is, but they're not setting gold standards for projects. Or um, I mean, if you look at um, container registries, for example, there are multiple container registries out there. Uh, you know, th that's not really what we're doing here. What, uh, so, um, you know, I'm just putting that out there. I think what, what, what I see this more is an opportunity to collaborate with other people who are trying to solve the same um, problems and, you know, come up with some, what I, what I personally, this is, is this that I like about the operator framework and the lifecycle management is that it gets us beyond basic installs and um, of operators and things that can do. And what I, what I think is, is it creates a pattern for things to get, um, to have more maturity and be more helpful in the life cycle of operators and that service on any Kubernetes platform. So that's that, I think that's more of the goal of operator hub.io is to bring and to, to show what level of support you're going to get for the different things. And so, it, it, yeah, it's more of a pattern. Um, but it, you, know, you don't have to do beyond an install. Um, so yeah. let, me, let me ask this then. Uh, so I've got two questions or, or a comment and a question. One of the things that, this, that I've heard in the TOC meetings repeatedly is the CNC uh, F isn't going to bring that collaboration. A project they expect should be out there collaborating, whether it's in the CNCF or not. That is just one of the pieces of feedback they've given. So to say, to have it in the CNCF will bring the collaboration. It, normally one of the things they, they push back on that, and they say you should have that collaboration anyway. I've heard that in, in, in a number of calls. But my question would be, so we talk about something like operator lifecycle manager, right? Let's go and say, and this is something that, that I've done where I'm at, um, well, let's say I have an operator packaged up as a Helm chart. There's no operator lifecycle manager involved. And I'm doing this to create an entirely separate avenue as an example. It's only for an example with the operator hub. Now, how would something like that be positioned and displayed and fit in to the operator hub? Because it's a different flow from the other tooling that's that's proposed here. Yeah. So there for specifically for that example, there is scaffolding and a little automated tool to um, turn that into something that's operator, currently what's considered operator hub um, 
sufficiently wrapped up to be an operator hub. Uh, Does it require operator lifecycle manager? Uh, uh, you're asking. Uh, I don't know the answer to that. I, okay. I don't, okay. don't think it. I don't think it does. It injects some more YAML around it to make it work in the flow. <clears throat> flow, but I, you know, I'm gonna reserve judgment because I just should. I shouldn't speak where I don't know exactly the answer to that. Yeah. So apologies. But I, I don't think so. It's pretty simple um, scaffolding that gets added and wrapped around it. Um, so it, there, there is a path for anything and or. There is a pattern for anything, uh, new things, like whether it's Kudo, which I don't know much about, or you know, KuBuilder. There are collaborations going on already. What we just really want to get, I think, is the lift from more eyeballs on the project that you get by becoming an incubated project. Um, and you know, then probably myself and other people who come to the project will be doing, you know, still driving that collaboration. Daniel Messier and myself have been doing most of it, as well as um, Matt Dorn and a few other folks, um, and Chris Short, but there, you know, there's, there, you know, we're gonna be honest, there's primarily Red Hatters working on it, um, on the outreach right now. Though there's, you know, a couple hundred operators, um, you know, in the, in the operator hub, not a couple hundred, but a hundred operators in the operator hub from lots of independent people. All right, so um, I, I'm trying to figure out what the um, next set of actions can be from this because there's it, there is definitely um, well, we're missing context somewhere. So um, what 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 I will do is um, I'm going to follow up through um, our uh, mailing list, and so we can figure out first of all where we're trying to be, and then figure out how we're going to get there. So. The thing I would ask is, um, and it's normally, I just jumped on the call, so it's normally Aaron Boyd and Daniel Messier who have been answering most of the questions for the TOC. So if you put it in an email thread, let's get them to answer the official ones because I'm basically just the manager behind operatorhub.io. So um, that I'd like them to be able to weigh in it. And I think Aaron answered a few of the questions um, in the issues yeah. list on, uh, for the TOC already. I just haven't had the bandwidth to go and I wasn't on the TOC call, so I apologize for that. Can, can I make two suggestions of things to, to work out on this? Um, one is the TOC asked about the definition of an operator. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that was a specific ask of the TOC to come back with something in writing. And so we should probably chase that down. Hopefully it's pretty easy since Coros defined it in a manner that everybody's been running with uh, a few years ago. And then the second action um, I would suggest is there is Kudo is an operator and they have an open submission to the TOC. So uh, I would suggest SIG app delivery actually reach out to that project on it because a lot of people who submit projects still don't know that it needs to go through a SIG first. Uh, there's a bunch of communication and stuff. There's even been um, some due diligence that's gone before the TOC and they said, Hey, what did, did the SIG review this first and help with it? And they're like, uh, we didn't know that that had to happen. So it's probably a good idea to have yeah. the SIG actually reach out to Kudo to loop them in and maybe bring them in and start doing the due diligence that the TOC expects. I would suggest those as two next steps because that'll kind of help see how everything fits together because that's what the TOC I think wanted. Yep. If, um, and, and I don't know how many of you are from the SIG are coming to KubeCon in San Diego in a couple of weeks. If you wanna have uh, a face-to-face, about this, um, I, I have a room at the at the Marriott that I would happily schedule a time to, to deep dive in further and bring Aaron and um, not Daniel, but um, Rob Sumsky and the other engineers too on this um, and we can talk about it more in further depth. I'm not sure whether you'd like to do that or not, if we have time. Um, yeah, let's see uh, who we can get together. I might, uh, uh, I'm trying to be available and see with um, obviously the other people as well. Obviously we won't have time during the SIG discussion per se, but we can try to find the time. Yeah. Uh, I think there's just a couple more things that I think still need some, some homework here. Um, one is really the requirements to run it and um, because eventually somebody has to provide the infrastructure for operator habit if, it's, if it is submitted. 
And even if somebody's sponsoring this, uh, we should have a better understanding what's uh, really required to run it. Um, the second point is really on the governance model where I'd also like to better understand how you envision the future governance model to work, how like operator can make it into uh, the operator hub uh, who would have a saying in this and then how, how you plan to have this further developed to your point. Uh, I think it, it's great that you started this project at Red Hat and I want to widen it out just a bit more clearance how you, how you expect this to look like uh, would be great. Mm -hmm. Yep, happy to do those. So, uh, and then and I think on the, on the splitting whether it's two separate submissions we can discuss later. Uh, by the way, I just read the website again of Operator Hub about publishing and submitting it. Um, I think this is also kind of like a bit ambiguous because there's for the operator, your operator should be able to be managed by the operator lifecycle management, by the uh, operator lifecycle manager. And when it then comes to automated testing, uh, I think it has the operator lifecycle manager as a requirement in there. Okay, well, I, I will I get a language is a bit unclear. So we'll, we can work on that and and clean that up and, and respond. Uh, I'll get one of the, the other folks who are managing the process to clean that up. Yeah, and Diane, thanks for jumping on the call. So we were not that good at the preparing the agenda up front. So thanks for your flexibility as well here. No worries. I'm sure I misspoke at least five times. So um, that's We'll clean it. Well, I'll, I'll go through the notes and make sure that the folks who are on the engineering side answer your questions too. All right. Um, okay. Well, all right. Well, that gives us um, two items on our agenda list that we have follow up items on. Um, so the next one is the application delivery model. And Alice, you want to speak to that? Yeah, I think we have done uh, some work on the application delivery model. So does, does everybody, is everybody worth the document and to who had actually a chance to read it and provide feedback? Let's start there. And some people that's just posting it in the chat right now. So this was like the first uh, delivery that uh, the first deliverable we uh, were planning to work on. And uh, I think Harry's done a great job moving this one forward. I think the key piece in there is really that diagram, which is a bit further down on the, uh, yeah, on the, on the reference model where we have application definition, packaging and so forth. Um, I think the next step would be from my perspective, and I want to put this up for discussion to be a bit more precise what Are the Zooms haunted today or is it just me? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I seem fairly haunted, okay. Hey, hear me again now. So what yeah, you're back. Yeah, you're, right. you're the haunted one. Got it. I'm the haunted one. So yeah, I think we should now define what really has to be defined in the individual layers and whether there's like a um, a certain logical flow of components and also which projects or the people are using for application delivery see themselves at which layers, which also helps us with uh, the landscape work. So where we would put them. So because it's really related to things. If we can define a landscape based on the model, it will show that the model actually works for categorizing projects. Uh, if you figure out that every project fits into multiple layers, that's kind of an interesting finding as well. Uh, oops, and the other topic is really what should be described at uh, the individual layers and what the definition should look like for those and what we have there. Uh, does this make sense to? Yeah, and I, I would actually expect many projects to cross many of the different layers of the things you're calling topics in this because they're going to be targeted around solving end user problems. And when you try to do that, you're going to end up touching many of these in order to create um, 
a good user experience or to provide usability in the solution that's targeted. Uh, have has uh, SIGAP Delivery captured um, who different roles and actors are and their needs and things like that at all yet? I think honestly, we haven't come any further than what you see on the screen right now, really. On okay. this one specifically, some parts were in the charter, but most of the, the recent uh, efforts were really about like project uh, presentations and not so much on the model. That's why we weren't trying to push the focus back now a bit more in the application um, delivery model here. Yeah, I mean, if you're trying to create a usable solution for certain end users, like an application developer, an application operator, you're going to end up having tools that cover a lot of the different layers here, just in order to create something that has good usability. You, you know, if you're doing the Unix model where you've got lots of things separated into small slices, possibly, but quite often you have to chain those together. And heck, a lot of the app developers and app operators out there even just want a nice GUI in place that does a lot of the stuff for them. So. Good point, Matt. Uh, yeah, on the yeah, I think we should just go one level deeper what we want for the individual piece, like for application definition. So actually, um, this is another thought: is that we're going to be meeting in person in two weeks. Yeah. Um, like two weeks from today, I think. Um, so. Um, why don't we prepare something so we, um, well, we will be doing this so that we can actually um, show this so we can get some consensus with a, a much larger group of people than, than what we yeah. have now. Um, and, and, and to tell you the truth, um, I'm trying to figure out what, like, when we should actually think about shipping this and um, with KubeCon coming up, you know, that's a, that's a great opportunity to gather some feedback and then we can think about our next steps after that event. Yeah, yeah, thanks for pointing that out. And actually, there's a that session dedicated to uh, the application delivery model at KubeCon. So everybody's yeah. welcome to join mm -hmm. that session. And uh, I think it's actually called a workshop. And I think it should be a workshop where we really say, okay, what do we want to have like in the application definition piece? What do we want to have in there? What do you put in there and what people see in there to have more details there? And maybe really defer it to a face to face discussion, which we're going to have in, in two weeks from now. I think that makes a lot of sense. I really like the, the idea of an interactive workshop because I, I, I think like testing this model out with post-its would actually be really in, like, I think a good, a good test of it basically. Is there a, is there a workshop date and time set for two weeks I could find? Uh, there is, yeah, it's on the website already. I can tell you also when that meeting is going to happen. So um, let me just quickly check here. Give me just a second. So the workshop is scheduled for Thursday, 10.55 a.m. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you say 1.55 a.m.? 1055. 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 all right, okay. I was, all right. Yeah, we'll, we'll also share it by the mailing list so that everybody has the dates of uh, those workshops. The first one is just the introduction, which might not be that interesting to this group, but I think the workshop is definitely uh, interesting for people. I think that mostly concludes the meeting for today, I think. With five minutes left otherwise. All right, well, there's no need of keeping people around. Yeah. There's other things to be done. Um, I guess we can just call it here. So the next time we will um, meet, we'll be at KubeCon during our session. So until then, safe travels and have a good day. Brian, this is right. Diane. Diane you oh, 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 Diane? Um, because I do have someone graciously gave me a room at the Gaslight Marriott for the week. So if we wanted to have a separate meeting um, to talk about any of the operator hub stuff or 
something else to that related, I, I'd happily um, schedule some time. Okay. It only fits 15 people, yeah. but um, I, and I'll, I'll add some notes to the meeting here with follow up on some of the questions that were asked. Um, I, 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 I've asked a bunch of questions, so I'd be happy to join. I think that I think that, I think like a few people in person sounds like a good idea. I think we mentioned that on the TSC call as well. Yeah. So I'm I'm going to set up the the doodle and the calendaring thing hopefully tomorrow, um, and we can figure out a time that might work for everybody. I'll I'll look at the schedule and uh, but that's that's my goal with that room is to if we need face to face time to use it wisely. All right, Diane. Um, so we'll we'll reach out to you. All right, and I'll put my email in the box in case you don't have it. All right. I was just going to Google you. Hey, well, it's easy. I'm all <laughs> All right, cool. Um, get me on Twitter, to be quite honest, which is kind of scary. All right. All right, well, in that case, um, Diane, we will be following up with you, and um, we'll, we'll put out a call. I think there are a couple people that we would like to have uh, a conversation around that, and, um, but we have to keep in mind the amount of space that we have but we'll work out the logistics for that. All right, well, thank you, Diane, for popping in here from whatever else you were doing. Um, that is appreciated. And thank you everyone else for showing up today. And like I was saying before, uh, we'll see you in a couple weeks, in person, some of you at least. Um, and then we will not be having this, and then we'll have this meeting again, what is it, like the 6th of December? Is that the day, I believe? Seems accurate. Yeah. Close enough. It's a so, Yep. So it's like a month. Yeah, that's right. It's like a month. Um, so um, until then, um, um, bye. <laughs> Good to see you all. Bye, everyone. Bye, all. See you guys at Kuka. All right.